and right here i'm seeing some error right here so just pick your normal brush tool and just paint it out make sure you forgot the color is set to black and just paint it out like that okay now what i'm going to do next i'm just going to change blend mode to let's see soft light let's see soft light let's see overlay soft light hard light okay i'm just going to change the blend mode to soft hello youtube today here and in this video i'm going to show you guys how to get this kind of results when you're retouching your studio portrait image so this was the image originally and i'm just going to retouch this image and show you guys how i got this results right here so let's get started okay i'm just going to delete everything i did and start from the beginning all right this was the image um, when i brought it to photoshop and um, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to duplicate my layer by clicking on Ctrl J because I don't like working on my background layer. So after duplicating my layer, I'm just going to remove the blemishes on the skin. And to remove the blemishes on the skin, I'm just going to create a focus separation. So I come to my Touch and Academy and just click on focus separation via Gaussian Blur. And you can use any focus separation action you have. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be using a radius of. Um, let's say seven and click on ok and i'm just going to come to my high frequency texture because this is where all my texture is um the low frequency consists of the colors while the high frequency consists of the textures since i want to take out the textures on the skin so i will come to my high texture layer and i just pick my close thumb tool right here and just zoom in and just hold alternate to sample from a close by area and paint on any blemishes i want to remove Turn it to sample and paint. Turn it to sample and paint. If you're using this with just an academy focus separation, if you're using this your close thumb tool, make sure your sample is on current layer, not correct and below. So take note of that. Make sure your sample is set to current layer. So I'm just going to sample and just paint. This image doesn't have a lot of blemishes. So I've removed the blemishes for this image. The next I'm going to do right now, after I remove the blemishes, I'm just going to um open my micro dodge and burn and i'm just going to even out the way lights fall on the skin to make the skin look a little bit smoother as well so i'm going to click on dodge and burn curves i'm just going to add levels to make it a little bit darker so let me quickly explain this layer right here so this first one right here is our visual aid and it enables me to see the dark part of the image and the bright part of the image so some people use invert check layer so you can also use invert check layer if you know how to use invert check layer but this one right here looks more easier for me because i'm not going to be doing extreme micro dodge above for this image if i'm going to be doing extreme micro dodge above for this image i'm going to be using the invert check layer so what i just did i just turned the image to black and white and i just used levels to add um more contrast to the image so i can see that part of the image and the bright part of the image so that's what this visual aid is for and uh, you can choose to delete it and you can choose to leave it but just enable me see where to dodge better and where to burn better so for example if i turn it on this part right here let me just pick my normal brush tool this part right here will not be able to see it very well that it's looking a little bit darker but if i turn the visual aid on you can see right now i know this place is dark and i also know this place right here are dark i also know this part right here are dark but if i turn it off i won't be able to see that it won't be that obvious so that's why i use visual aid so that i can see where to dodge and where to burn so let me just quickly delete that new layer i added so i hope you understand the, the use of this visual aid right now why this below layer is our dodge and burn layer so down here we have the burn and up here we have the dodge so dodge is simply to brighten a particular place while burn is to darken a particular place so for my micro dodge and burn i'm going to be dodging the dark parts of the image and i'm going to be burning the bright part of the image simply means i'm going to be making the dark part brighter i'm going to make the bright part a little bit darker just to smoothen it out so i'm just going to be doing that right now the next thing i'm going to do i'll just pick my normal brush tool and just make sure my flow is set to one percent and my opacity is set to 100 so i'm just going to increase my brush size and just paint on those dark parts with my dodge to make those dark parts a little bit brighter just to make it look smooth and even like that so the reason why i brought my flow to one percent is because i don't want it to be too much so that's why i put it to one percent so i'm just going to paint on those dark parts to make them a little bit brighter and make them look even 
yeah, a lot smoother basically that's what i'm going to be doing for the whole of this image right now so let me just quickly show you the before and after of what we just did so you can see the difference so let me turn off my visual aid so you can see uh before and after just look at this place right here you can see the difference so let me just open my brush size again so see the before and after so just look at this part right here so see the before and the after so you can see the before and the after you can see that looking bright right now so let me just delete this and continue doing what i was doing i turn on my visual aid back on and just continue brushing right now okay let's see our before and after let me just delete this visual aid so these are before and these are after these are before and these are after so next i'm going to do right now i want to work on the eye bag right here i feel it's looking somehow so i just want to work on it a little bit and see so i'm going to create a stamp visible layer by clicking on ctrl shift alternate e so after I create the stamp visible layer i'll just pick my patch tool and just select the eye bag like this like this and just drag it a little bit down like this so after that i'm just going to face this selection so i'll come to my edit and click on fade patch selection and just reduce the opacity i think 60 works for this image let's use 60 and just click on or 61 and just click on okay so let me just deselect by clicking on ctrl d so this is the uh this is the before and this is the after before and after now the next thing i'm going to do i'm just going to create another focus equation and this time i'm going to use my mixer brush to smoothen out the skin a little bit so i'll come to my touch and academy click on my focus separation via gaussian blur and just use the radius of about seven like before and click on okay and i'll just pick my mixer brush too right here and for my mixer brush too, i'm using a soft rank brush and i'm using a clean brush i'm on custom my weight is on 30 my load is on 20 my mix is on 20 my flow is on 20 and sample all layer is checked why this place right here is on 10. you can use my mixable settings or you can use any mixable settings that works for you there's no perfect mixable settings everybody has their own mixable settings which they use but this settings right here works for me and i'll be using it and um once i pick my mesa brush too i'm just going to turn off my high texture layer and it's going to remain only the colors on the image you know the um high frequency consists of the textures while the low frequency consists of the colors since i'm not brushing my low frequency directly and i'm brushing on an on a new empty layer that's why my sample all layer is checked so it's going to sample everything that is below this new layer right here this corrective tone and what is below this corrective tone is my low frequency so it's just going to brush only the colors and it's not going to affect the texture but if you're using another focus separation that, that does not have this empty layer right here or this corrective thing right here you can just brush on your low frequency and make sure your sample layer is unchecked so don't check your sample layer but if you are brushing on a on a new empty layer make sure sample layer is checked so since i'm brushing on a new empty layer so sample layer is checked so i'm just going to use my mixer brush to, to just brush on this image so make sure you are brushing your highlights separately and uh, make sure you are brushing your uh, shadow separately and make sure you are increasing and decreasing your brush size according to the part you are working on don't just use a small brush to just paint the whole of your image so just increase and decrease your brush size and to decrease and increase your brush size just use the square bracket key on your keyboard to decrease and increase it so this image is looking smooth already so i'm not just going to waste my time to do a whole lot of mi uh, mixing the colors because the image is looking smooth already and also i've already done um micro dodge and bond okay, we are done so let's see the before and after so this is the before and this is the after this is the before and this is the after just the subtle difference but i feel i still want to paint this transition right here to make it look a little bit even so i'm just going to paint on this place right here to make it look even okay 
now this thing i'm going to do i'm just going to add portraiture to this image and remember if you don't have portraiture it's not compulsory but i'm just going to add portraiture to make it a little bit smoother so i'm just going to merge my creative tool and my low frequency together by clicking on ctrl e and um after that i come to my filter i come to my imagenic and i come to my portraiture i'm just going to use normal or medium i'm just going to use medium for this image and i'll click on ok and what this is going to do is just going to smooth in the image a little bit you will not you will not even see the difference so let's make sure it before and after this is the before and this is the after this is the before and this is the after just a subtle difference you are not going to see any difference at all so next i'm going to go right now i want to even ask the colors on the skin so i'm just i have an action for that so if i just come to my actions right here and click on even skin tone where is my even skin tone so i just click on even skin tone it's going to show me this gradient map right here i'm just going to even it but i'm just going to show you how to do it from scratch just in case you don't have this action so this is how you do it for scratch so to do that the first thing i'm going to do make sure your foreground color is set to default so if it's not on default make sure you click on this black and white icon right here to change your foreground and background color to default make sure your black is your foreground and your white is on your background after that come to your adjustment layer come to your gradient map if you can find your adjustment layer up here just click on this icon right here and just look for your gradient map so once you find your gradient map make sure this method is changed to classic and after that just change your um, normal to color your blend mode from normal to color and after that just invert your layer mask by clicking on ctrl i to invert your layer mask so after you invert your layer mask come back to your gradient and open your gradient properties so to add your midtones just click on this middle right here once like this and it's going to add midtones for you so just change the location to 50 so that it should be in the middle and after that this part right here is going to be our shadows right here is going to be our midtones right here is going to be our highlights so for the shadow area just click on your shadows so make sure you click on your shadows and just click on this color right here and just pick on any color of the image you want to be your shadow so i want this place right here to be my shadow so i'm going to sample from this place and here is going to be my shadow and after that i'm, click, I'm just going to click on ok and i'll do the same thing for the midtones click on this midtones right here click on this color and i want this part right here to be my midtones so i'm just going to click on it and uh, for the highlights i'll come to my highlights click on it or this um, forehead right here to be my highlights so let's see okay so i'm going to leave it like this and i'll click on ok so after the next thing i'm going to do i'm just going to pick my normal brush tool this time bring back my flow to 100 and just come to my um, layer mask and make sure my foreground color is set to white this time and just paint on the image like that just to even out the colors on the image so if you feel you make a mistake you can just um switch to your black brush and paint it out of the dress like that so right now in some ways i'm just going to reduce the opacity to make it look even more real so i'm going to reduce the opacity so i think 20 works for this image i'll just leave it at 20 20 is okay so this is the before and this is the after you can see the skin too are looking even but right here you can see this part right here are looking a bit yellowish so just to change this yellowish look right here to the normal skin just come to your hue and saturation adjustment layer and just come to your yellows so just come to your yellows and just play with the saturation of the yellows i'm going to move the yellows to this side a little bit and move the saturation up like this and what i'm going to do now, i'm just going to invert it by clicking on ctrl i to invert and pick my normal brush tool and just use my white brush to paint on only this part right here only this part right here which i want to work on like this to make it look even and after that i'm just going to play with the opacity to make it look even more realistic okay now these are before and these are after before and after you can see that yellow place right see there is looking even like the skin right now what we're going to do next we're going to make the eyes white so i have action for that so i'll come to my actions click on eyes and teeth let's see click on eyes and teeth and just paint on the eyes so i already have actions for that if you want to learn how i create this as a teeth whitening action i'll be leaving a link to that video in the description below so you can go and watch it and learn how to create your own eyes and teeth whitening action like this
okay now these are before and these are after i feel it's too white so i'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit and right now i'm just going to brighten the eyes a little bit so i come to my adjustment layer click on my brightness and contrast just increase the brightness increase the contrast just invert my control i and just paint on only this part of the eyes remember don't paint on the black part of the eyes just paint on only the colors on the eyes just to um, make it look even brighter so this is the before and this is the after so you can see the eyes are looking brighter like that but if you can choose to reduce it if you want so i'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit like that okay now this i'm going to do right now i'm just going to add a little bit of color grading to this image this image looks good already and does not really need color grading but i'm just going to add a little bit of colors to the shadows and a little bit of colors to the highlights and to do that i'll just come to my adjustment layer again i come to my color balance and just come to my shadows and add a little bit of science to the shadow area like this i think uh, minus two is okay and add a little bit of um greens and uh, add a little bit of blues to the shadow area so i just move my blue slider towards the side like this i think plus seven or let's say plus five is okay and next i'm going to I'll come to my highlights and just add a little bit of reds to the highlights plus four and i'll add a little bit of yellows to the highlights like this minus four okay it's okay like this so this is the before and this is the after you can see just a subtle difference before and after the image is looking good and next time i'm going to i'm just going to add contrast to this image with my levels adjustment layer so i come to my adjustment layer i click on levels and just push these black shadows inside like this and i'll move these highlights inside again like this just to add contrast to this image so this is the before and after before and after you can see this image is looking good already now the next thing i'm going to do i'm just going to add that overlay to the background so i'm just going to create a stamp visible layer by clicking on ctrl shift alternate e and just select my subject on my object selection tool and click on select subject and photoshop will automatically select my subject for me and remember the selection doesn't have to be perfect because we are not changing the background we're just adding overlay to the background so the selection doesn't have to be all perfect okay now after making selection of my subject i'm just going to add a layer mask by clicking on this layer mask right here so once i add that layer mask i'll just come so i'm just going to bring that um overlay to this image right now and to do that i come to my fair i'll just come to my place embedded and look for that overlay which i want to add so i'm just going to look for the overlay i'm just going to look for the overlay i think it's this one right here i click on place once i place it i'm just going to resize it to fit the image and click on ok And I'm just going to drag it down below my subject layer like this okay and then next thing I'm going to do I'm just going to come to my um, blend mode and I just change it to soft light or I think I'm just going to leave it in normal so once I leave it in normal I'll come to my um, filter I'll come to my blur I'll come to my cushion blur I'm just going to blur it with a radius of, of 15 there's no particular radius so just blur it to any radius you think works for you so I think I'm just going to blur this one with, uh, let's say 20, let's say 20, let's see what 20 looks like. Okay, 20 works for me, so I'll click on OK. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit. So I'll come to the opacity and just reduce it a little bit. I think 77 works for this image. Now the next thing I'm going to do right now, I want to add that, um, texture i added to the dress and to add that texture all i have to do is create a stamp visible layer again i click on ctrl shift alternate e and this time i'm just going to make a selection on of only the dress and to do that i'm just going to hold ctrl click on this my former selection right here and just work on the selection again make sure only the dress is selected so i pick my polygonal lasso tool just make a selection of only the dress okay right now you can see only the dress is selected i'm going to do right now, i'm just going to add a layer mask so once i click on layer mask so you can see we have a selection of the dress right here 
what I'm going to do next, I'm not going to bring that texture to this image. So I'll come to my fair, I'll come to my place embedded, and I'll just look for the textures which I want to add or which all the um design which I want to add rather. So this is the design right here. I click on OK, I click on place, and I'm just going to resize it to the dress, only the dress. I hold alternate and just pin it to the selection like this. So it's going to be affecting only the selection as you can see. And right here, I'm seeing some error right here. So just pick your normal brush tool and just paint it out. Make sure your forgot color is set to black and just paint it out like that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do next, I'm just going to change the blend mode to let's see soft light, let's see soft light, let's see overlay, soft light, hard light. Okay, I'm just going to change the blend mode to soft light. I think soft light works better. Okay. So right now you can see the edge are not looking um, realistic so to make the edge look even more realistic all you have to do is open this your layer tab so just open it and just click on this smart radius and just smoothen the edge and you can choose to feather the edge so just feather it and uh, next thing you can do just come to this shift edge and move this shift edge to this side like this okay and click on okay so it's looking even more realistic like this and another thing you can do just pick your normal brush tool and just remove it from the part which you don't want so make sure your focal color is set to black and just remove it from the part which you feel it should not affect like that so just take your time to work on it remove it from the part which you feel it should not affect like that so i'm using my black brush to just make it look even more realistic as you can see now another thing i'm going to do i'm just going to come to this my um design which i added and just click on it and open the blending blending option so as i open the blending option i'm just going to move this um underlying layer so i'm just going to move this white to this side a little bit and just hold the alternate to split and just move it to this side a little bit to make it look even more realistic okay and i'll come to this my um underline layer again move my blacks to this side split it and just move it to the side a little bit to make it look even more realistic and click on okay now you can see the before and the after before and after you can see it's looking even more realistic and next time i'm going to do i'll come to my filter i'm just going to come to my um design again i'll come to my filter i'll come to my blur click on Gaussian blur and just blur it with radius of about let's say three three is okay I'll click on okay and next thing I can do I can just reduce the opacity a little bit okay so that's how I edited this image so let's see our variable before and after these are before and these are after and the next thing I'm going to do I'm just going to make this um, face look sharper because I feel it's looking kind of blurry and to do that all you have to do is create a stamp visible layer by clicking on ctrl shift alternate e and just come to your uh, filter you come to your sharpen and you come to your smart sharpen and I've already um, done my amount so you can choose the amount you want so I like this amount right here and uh, make sure motion blur is set so you can choose motion blur or any one you want but i prefer using this motion blur and i'm just going to change my angle to this side like this and uh, my radius is set to 1.8 and i'll click on ok and it's going to apply the sharpen to the whole image but i don't want the sharpen to affect the whole image i want it to affect only the face and i'll show you how to make it affect only the particular place which you want like for this image i want the sharpen to affect only the face i don't want it to affect the entire image so let me quickly show you how you can do that okay so this sharpen apply to the whole image i want to remove the whole image and apply it only on the face and to do that i'm just going to create a layer mask and just click on ctrl i to invert my layer mask and just paint with my white brush on the face like this to make that effect affect only the face so make sure you are painting with your normal brush too and you're using a soft round brush 
and your opacity is set to 100 and your flow is set to 100 okay now this is the before and this is the after so let's see our overall before and after this is where we started from and this is where we are right now so guys that's how i retouch this portrait using photoshop if you like this video or you learn anything from this video make sure to give this video a like so that more people can see this video and learn from this video as well and also if you want to learn how to manipulate your image make sure to click on this video showing on your screen right now and i'll see you guys in my next video stay creative